welcome to this week's episode of Life Support, your very own blueprint for a better life. Straight, because this is the only lifestyle show about real life. Only because we here at Life Support have all the solutions to all the problems you people always seem to have. Yes, that's right. I was at Life Support's resident doctor, Rudy, here. A little later tonight, I'll be showing you parents a natural way to tame your toddler's tantrums. And I'll be revealing a terrific technique for a pain-free tattoo. G'day, Todd the Handyman here, and coming up, I've got a top tip to restore some simple thoroughfare safety to your home. And I'll be gearing you blokes up with a great way to meet the ladies in today's mistrustful market. I'm Sigourney, and tonight I'll be showing all you modern women, and women who aspire to be, a wonderful revenge idea when you find yourself jilted. I'm Penny, and you should be looking to me if you want to make your life a lot simpler. Tonight, I'll be demonstrating how with some simple craft, you can let the lecherous lads at the local know that no means piss off. Well, I must say, we have a lot to teach tonight. That's right, so let's not hang about, let's give it a green light. Jeez, that was close. 90% of accidents happen in the home and high usage areas are always going to result in domestic black spots like this. But don't worry, there is something you can do about it before tragedy strikes. <laughs> Simply install a roundabout in your home's high traffic areas. All you need is an old tyre painted white for safety then landscape with some Australian natives for that authentic DMR look. Now you can install these anywhere in your home where collisions can happen and they're easy to customise to suit a variety of traffic patterns or decors. Remember roundabouts not only steer traffic in the right direction, they also slow down any potential troublemakers. So take a tip from Todd and tame your toddler traffic today. Always the last one standing. <laughs> There's nothing more annoying than putting out coasters for your guests only to sit and watch them not being used. Especially when it results in waterings on your fine coffee table. But I've found a fabulous and fun way to make sure your guests always use the coasters you provide. All it takes is a bit of decoupage. The problem with attractive coasters like these is that people are reluctant to put anything on top of something so pretty. So all you have to do is cover your coasters with pictures you and your guests would rather have covered up. Just scour a variety of magazines for the appropriately appalling images. Then cut these out and use a thin down water-based woodworking adhesive to glue them onto your coasters. And once they've dried, just apply a couple of coats of clear Estopol. So there you are, ready for your next evening of entertaining. So where should we go first? Yeah, I'm gorgeous. Can I buy a drink? No. <laughs> when you're having a cup of quiet drinks with a couple of quiet mates, there's nothing worse than the leering attentions of a guy who just doesn't cut it. <laughs> so what do you do when he doesn't understand that no means piss off? All you need to deflect the dickheads is one of these. That's right, it's a door snack. All you have to do is simply cut your snake in half, like so, and empty out some of the sawdust inside. Then when you have your desired length, put it aside to sew later on. Now, with the end of the other half, empty out most of the sawdust and tie a knot here. And another knot here. Then simply snip off the excess material and you're left with two balls filled with sawdust. Now, sew the other half up then sew these two pieces together. Then slide the whole package down your pants and your door snake is now a trouser snake. So, the next time some goose staggers up to you to tell you you're beautiful, just invite him to cop a feel. And enjoy the confusion registering in his cloudy eyes when he feels tongue where there should be groove. And you'll be left alone for the rest of the night. 
just remember to whip out your trouser snake if you see someone you like the look of. Or you may find your relationship getting off to a weird start. See ya. Well, Todd, I must say I'm a little disappointed, mate. Why is that, Sigourney? Well, when Penny asked to borrow some sewing scissors and a needle and thread, I thought she might be finding her feminine side. Obviously, I was very wrong. Yeah, I thought it was a pretty good idea myself. Really? Oh, yeah, when you're battling with the beer goggles, sometimes you women need to take more drastic measures to get the point across. Oh, what rubbish. <laughs> I think she needs to change her venue rather than changing her gender. I mean, the watering holes I frequent, if I'm confronted by a man who happens to be wearing his Grosch goggles, well, I just use it as a starting point for negotiation. Any woman would. Yeah, right. <laughs> hey, uh, Sigourney, do you have any tattoos? <laughs> what do you think, Todd? I don't know, that's why I asked. No, I don't. I'm not interested in subtracting from the glory of my body by cheapening it with some tacky tattoo. But Penny's got a tattoo. Exactly. She's got a couple, actually. Well, I reckon you'd look quite cute with a chain of flowers on your ankle or maybe a little butterfly just above your bum. Really? Anyway, I don't think I could take the pain of having a tattoo done. Well, now you don't have to because here's Dr Rudy with a top technique on dealing with the pain of that permanent procedure. How's it? Dr Rudy here. This week I received a letter from Siobhan of Lekemba, a young lady with a query that is quite typical of young women today. She writes, Dear Dr Rudy, I have been thinking about it for quite a while now, and I would love to get a tattoo. The only problem is, I have a very low tolerance to pain, and seeing as though most tattooists demand that you be sober for your session, I was wondering if you could recommend an alternative painkiller that could help me through my ordeal. Yours in anticipation, Siobhan. Well, Siobhan, I think I have the answer for you and every other woman who wants to follow a fad but can't take the pain. All you have to do is become pregnant. That's right. Get yourself in the family way and then in nine months' time, tell your hippie midwife that instead of a homeopathic home birth, you would like to go tribal for your first baby. Keep pushing. Keep still, God damn it. You see, the medical of childbirth blocks out all other pain. So, it is the perfect time to have any other painful procedures done. And a tattoo parlor is the perfect place to give birth. These days you'll find they are more sterilized than most public hospitals. But once the child is born and your tattoo complete, you'll have at least one part of your body that you're happy to look at. Just remember that sometimes you may not like your tattoo straight away. But don't worry, most tattoo trauma is quite normal. Bye now. I'll leave it out. As any Aussie bloke will tell you, there's nothing more relaxing and natural on the weekend than indulging in a bit of binge drinking. But don't you hate it when it's the morning after and your mates make out that you were the one that went too far and got too drunk? And you don't know if it's true because you can't remember anything. Well, don't despair, because there is a way to total yourself on the weekend and not be the figure of infamy the next day. When you go out, bring along an Aboriginal mate. G'day, Kev. G'day, bro. How you doing? Good, mate. That way, it doesn't matter how hammered you get, the next day your mates, like everybody else in the country, will automatically assume that he was drunker than you. You want a beer, Kev? Cool. So, take a tip from Todd, and if you enjoy binge drinking but suffer from blackouts, just bring along a black fella. If you pick your drinking partners carefully, you can enjoy your excess without the remorse. Beer, thanks, mate. A lot of women these days make choices, and we're all different, and that's OK. A modern woman should never wear comfortable shoes. I mean, pretty shoes may be uncomfortable to walk in, but you don't have to walk anywhere when you've been swept off your feet. I admire career women. I mean, if I went home alone every night to nothing but an empty house, a cask of Chardonnay and a frozen lean cuisine, 
I mean, I get so lonely. A modern woman should always treat your mouthful 32 times. It helps you to remember not to speak and gives you that shy, deferential look. What do I think of Jermaine Greer? Well, I don't want to be cruel because she is an old lady and it's not her fault she's a lesbian. When I was a little girl, my grandmother used to say to me, Who are you? What are you doing here? She was so into metaphysics. It was so sad. Well, some wonderful reflections there for young ladies like yourself, Benny. You reckon? Yes. Well, generally speaking, did you know, Penny, that these days parents are being frowned upon if they smack their children for being naughty? Oh, not just parents. Babysitters have been banned from using the hand as well. Mm. It's a total joke. Well, you don't have to worry because coming up, I'm going to show you all an alternative way to tame a toddler's tantrums. Is your child naughty? Yes, I know all children are naughty these days. So increasingly, you parents are turning to doctors like me to find a convenient, time-saving medical solution to your child's naughtiness. Now you could get your doctor to prescribe this. Ritalin. If doping up your child with drugs to moderate their behavior appeals to you, then this is for you. But the new trend with parents is to be down on pills. It's so hard to force a child to swallow them. So today, I'm going to teach you how to subdue your child the natural way. Simply raise your child on a vegetarian diet. After just two weeks of eating only vegetables and lentils, they'll be too tired and listless to get up to any mischief. They'll be too sickly to roughhouse and scuff up their clothes or run around making lots of noise. And you'll never have to hit your child with a wooden spoon again. Because when they turn up at school with a tofu sandwich, the other children will bully them so brutally they will completely crush any remnants of their precocious character. No more TV for you. I want to read my book. So. There you have it. To tame your child's tantrum, simply tamper with their tea time and remove their meat. It's a completely natural way to turn them from a Genghis Khan to a Gandhi. Bana. You know, these days it's getting harder and harder to meet women. You spend a fortune scouring the local watering holes on a Saturday night and if you eventually do speak to a woman, she's always reluctant to give you a phone number. Stalkers have a lot to answer for. Well, don't worry. If you take a tip from Todd, you'll find yourself with a list of women's names and phone numbers and it won't cost you a thing. you just got to make yourself one of these. Then when things get a little quiet in the lady friend apartment, just hold an open for inspection at your place. All you need is a suit, a clipboard and a little bit of patience. Then the women will come to you. And it's a great way to make a good first impression. You look nice, you appear to have a good job and you know the conversations will be forthcoming. Hi, I'm Miller Johnson. My numbers are on the card. Oh, uh, so Miller, are you looking to um, move in or invest? Oh, definitely move in. Yeah. I could totally see you living here. And you just do that several times until you have a list of prospective partners and phone numbers. Hi, I'm Brad Gurley. This place is perfect as an investment property. Oh, yeah. Well, you'd have to get rid of the asbestos and cure the concrete cancer. But, yeah, she goes all right. Of course, you have to expect the odd bloke, older woman or worse, married couple to come wandering through. But if you're organised, you can prevent this by placing an ad in the local paper, describing the place as ideal for the single urban professional woman. 
then once you've seen what's on the market, it's just a matter of choosing the right one. Oh, hello, Mila. Yeah, Mila, it's Todd here from the open inspection. I was just wondering if you wanted to have a private viewing of the property. Oh, great. I'll see you then. And that's all there is to it. A simple and surefire way to make sure you're always on top of the meeting market. For the modern woman scorned, melodramatic acts are always tempting, but only momentarily satisfying. Pining, sobbing and binging are just so unattractive and such a waste of time that could be better spent planning revenge. Revenge is so empowering. When you've been unaccountably dear jane why not strike back by taking aim where he's most sensitive, his wallet. Hello Larson, no don't speak, I'll be brief. Look, I need to come round this evening to pick up my belongings and to return your keys. Yes, and I'd prefer it if you weren't there. I just don't think I'm ready to see you right now. Once inside, head straight for his study and access his internet connection settings. Most national service providers give you a local phone number to dial up your nearest access point so that every time you log on, it'll cost you no more than a local call. However, these access points are nationwide and you may select a more remote one. So, simply change his local default phone number to one interstate. Now, every time you're tempted to think about him going about his life sans you, well, at least you know his newfound freedom will be costing him around 70 cents a minute. If she broke up with me, you know, it's her fault, so I might as well, you know, ruin her life so she can never date another bloke ever again. I have had guys come up to my house, break into my house and come up with like guns and also machetes threatening to kill me. You'd get the prank calls or the crank calls five times a day, six times a day, break through your window, um, obsessive calls to your home which really upsets your parents living at home also. She tried to tell everyone that like um, I was sleeping with her best friend but then I told everyone that she actually masturbated. You know what I mean? And, yeah. Well, Sigourney, I know we say it each week, but my word, we certainly do receive a lot of mail, don't we? I know, Dr Rudy, so much so that it's really starting to back up. And from looking at these letters, some people have problems that need urgent attention. Ah, no, have a listen to this problem from Jay Gaviscore of Tempe. He or she writes, Each week you refer to the amount of problems contained in your mailbag, but seldom seem to have the time to fix any of them. Will you be solving any of our problems? Regards, so on. Well, Jay, the answer to your question is yes. Of course, we want to help all average Australians as much as possible. We here at Life Support do hold all the answers to all your problems. So, for some of your more desperate cases, here are the solutions you've been looking for. Starting with Janelle of Geelong. Don't make more of it than what it is. Just leave him. Michael of Kelso. Try shea butter. I do. Brendan of Fremantle. No, I would not like to join you for a drink. Danny of Canberra. If wool irritates your skin that much, you could always try not wearing it. Arvin of Goldburn. That's not what it was intended for, but if it makes you happy and doesn't hurt anybody else, I say do it. Samantha of Coobapedi. You must leave town tonight. Now. With only the clothes on your back if you must, but it has to be tonight. Art of Cairns. Let me put it this way. I wouldn't. Gretel of Sydney. For a simpler solution, you could just try being nice to people. Dirk of Broome. Yes, I think 34 centimetres is about right. Beatrice of Alice Springs. You naughty, naughty girl. I love it. Ravi of Oberon. Well, from your photograph, I suggest if you stop rubbing it, it should go away. And finally, Linda from Launceston. Well, I think you just need to take a look at the next segment. Don't you hate it when you wake up in the middle of the night because you've got to go to the toilet? I mean, you're busting to go, but you don't want to get out of bed because it's so cold. Well, take a tip from Todd, because there is a way to take a leak in the comfort of your own bed. When you've got to go, go in a hot water bottle. 
That way, you never have to leave the comfort of your cosy bed. When you're finished, just screw the lid back on tightly and keep your bed and body warmer till morning. And that's all there is to it. An environmentally responsible way to strain the potatoes and keep warm in the middle of a cold winter's night. Oh, hey. Sometimes when I go into work, I just don't feel like doing any work. Fortunately, I found a great trick to get away with doing nothing all day. All you have to do is go commando. As soon as you ditch the bra, the guys in the office will be riveted to every movement of your chest. Especially if you bounce a bit as you move about the office. Oh, hi Klaus. Can I do anything for you? Don't worry, the other working women will go elsewhere before getting involved in such cheap point scoring stuff. And finally, when your boss finds out what's going on, he's not going to ask you to put your bra back on because then he'd have to acknowledge that he noticed you took it off. And if he did that, you could sue him for sexual harassment. And that's all there is to it. When you give your bra the day off, you can take the day off yourself. Because when you go commando, no one will notice if you don't do a stroke of work all day. See ya. Well, everyone, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but here we are at the end of another show. Ah, uh, no, I simply can't believe it. And I hope we've made your lives just that little bit better. And make sure you join us next week for our final show for Series 2. Yeah, that's right, because we may have a few surprises in store for you. Oh, don't worry, we definitely do. And it means you only have seven days left to send us your cure queries. Until then, you Australians be good to one another. And in the meantime, why not learn to play an ethnic instrument? And always remember, we're here for you. Good night, Australia. Australia.